Hello everyone, it's David from Automate Press. I am so excited today because today is a day that we've all been waiting for. It is the reveal and introduction of the all new Toyota Land Cruiser, something that we have been talking about for a while. Thankfully, a lot of the predictions I made about the Land Cruisers have become true, but there are also many, many surprises. In fact, let me tell you 30 things that you should know about the all new Toyota Land Cruiser. Let's go. Welcome back. So let me share with you 30 things or 30 surprises about the new Land Cruiser because there are many, many things I want to share with you. The first surprise is the obvious one, and that is the fact that we're even getting the Land Cruiser back here in North America. For US, it's only been three years since the Land Cruiser was discontinued, so it's not a huge deal. But here in Canada, we haven't had a Land Cruiser since 1996. That's 27 years ago. So the fact that it's coming back to the US, but also here in Canada, it's a big deal. And I'm super excited about this returning of the all new Land Cruiser. The second surprise might be the biggest surprise of all, and that is the pricing. Now, we don't have any official information on the pricing yet, and that won't be released for a while yet, but at least in the US, the press release is estimating in the mid $50,000 range. That's a far cry from the prices of the previous Land Cruiser, and that price is almost identical to the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro pricing. So how much would it be in Canada? Well, we don't have anything official from Toyota Canada either, but I'm estimating about the same price as the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro in Canada, which is about $70,000. Either way, it's a huge price difference from where it was before. So we are very thankful that they decided to change the pricing strategy to allow the average people like us to be able to finally buy the Land Cruiser. The third surprise is something that even I didn't expect, and that is the new Land Cruiser will not come with a non-hybrid version, only with the hybrid version, which is the iForce Max. It's the same engine and the same system that's used in the Toyota Tacoma for 2024. So that one now has 326 horsepower and 465 foot-pound of torque, which is a welcoming news because that is plenty of power and torque to get this Land Cruiser up and running through the woods, through the off-roading areas, and it's going to give you really good performance overall. And the good thing about turbo engine, especially when it's combined with a hybrid, is the fact that you're going to get maximum torque at a very low RPM and a very steady torque all the way through the rev ranges. And that will provide you with a better performance overall. And that's something I'm excited about. I know that it's a little bit disappointing that maybe the 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 from a Lexus GX is not carried over to the Toyota Land Cruiser, but that was expected because there has to be some differentiation in powertrain between the GX and the Land Cruiser. So I know that uh, Turbo 4 might not be for all of you, but I think the performance will be there and power and torque are definitely improved over the previous model. And by the way, this engine is paired with the 48 horsepower electric motor and 8-speed automatic transmission. And unlike other hybrid models in the Toyota lineup, just like the Tacoma, the actual electric motor is sandwiched between the engine and the transmission, providing with uh, maximum torque but not necessarily maximum efficiency. Really the idea here is to generate as much torque as possible and to give you that grunt feel and a really good acceleration, but not necessarily try to aim for the highest efficiency. And that is the right strategy for this particular product. The fourth surprise is that the new Land Cruiser will not have a seven seater option, only five seater as a standard. So that's something that might disappoint you as well. But again, they have to differentiate from a GX, which does offer a seven seater option. So it's understandable. And with a much lower price tag, you know what, we can't complain. The fifth surprise is a good one. And that is we're going to get a first edition model for the very first time. It's limited to only 5,000 units in North America. And you know what? It's going to have the round headlights instead of having a rectangle headlight. Something that was predicted by Best Car Magazine a while back, but we weren't sure if we're actually going to get the design with the round headlights, and we are. And that one is going to be the hot commodity, and it's going to be very difficult to get. It will also have a rock rails along with heritage color and two-tone color scheme. So that's the one to get if somehow we can get our hands on one. But the sixth point is that even a non-first edition model will have the good retro heritage look that's harking back to FJ62 design scheme. So you know what, even a non-first edition model look great in my eyes and both have a unique character and unique design scheme that would delight you. Now just to clarify, both the base Land Cruiser 1958 model 
as well as the first edition model gets the round headlight design in the front. And then the normal Land Cruiser or the mid-tier Land Cruiser is the one that gets the uh, rectangular headlight design. So you get to enjoy two different uh, front design depending on which model you might end up buying. The seventh surprise is the fact that we don't get TRD Pro nor the Trail Hunter model in the Land Cruiser lineup. Instead, what we have is the base model, which is called the Land Cruiser 1958, and then the mid-tier, which is just called Land Cruiser, and then the top tier, which is the first edition. So only three trims are offered, which is a bit of a surprise because they're not following any of the traditional Toyota uh, trim models such as TRD Off-Road or TRD Sport or TRD Pro. But perhaps those are coming later on to increase the value of the Land Cruiser as a whole. But for now, we have three simple trim levels. And you know what? I'm actually very excited about the 1958 model which is kind of back to basic model, which is my eighth point. And that one has black fabric seats, not leather or soft text. It's got a very simple configuration designed to give you maximum value. So that might be the one to get instead of the normal Land Cruiser or the almost impossible to get the first edition because the 1958 model is in fact the one that gives you the real feel of an older retro Land Cruiser. Moving up from the baseline, which is a 1958 model, is a normal Land Cruiser. And that's my ninth point, which is that mid-tier level does have a number of options, including the standard Land Cruiser or Land Cruiser with a premium package. So you can actually get a soft tech seat or actually a real leather in the premium package. So that's a welcoming news. And really, that's probably the one that most people will go for. So even though I think the 1958 is a classic one and the first edition is a very exclusive one, well, the mid-tier normal Land Cruiser will also be an exciting model. The tenth point is a very important one, and that is, as predicted, the new Land Cruiser will be built in Tahara factory in Japan, and not the Yoshiwara factory, where the original Land Cruiser 300 series are being built. And that differentiation is a big deal, because Yoshiwara factory is more of a semi-hand-built factory where lower volume is expected for more exclusive uh, units, such as Land Cruiser 300 series and Lexus LX 600s. So they have a very limited capacity for production, which is why there's a four-year waiting list on the Land Cruiser 300 series in Japan and elsewhere. Whereas the new Land Cruiser we're getting, likely to be called 250 series, is being built in Tahara, and that one has a much higher volume because that's a standard factory for Lexus. And because of the higher volume and also really good manufacturing practice, I think we can finally get our hands on the Land Cruiser with a decent volume coming out of that factory. In addition, Toyota is also indicating that the new Land Cruiser will be built in Hino plant in Japan, and that is a subsidiary of uh, Toyota. And again, that is to increase the volume for Land Cruisers in general. And Hino plant actually produced the FJ Cruisers, which is obviously discontinued for many years now. So they have a really good reputation for building trucks and off-road vehicles, and so that's also an added bonus. The 11th point is about the size of a new Land Cruiser, which might surprise you because it's almost as big as a Land Cruiser 300 series that are sold in Asia and elsewhere, maybe just a few inches off, but it is definitely smaller than the 200 series Land Cruiser that used to be sold in the US. I'll give you the exact number here so I can get my data in front of me. So compared to the 200 series Land Cruiser, the new 250 series Land Cruiser, which is the one we're getting, is a 4.4 inches narrower and 1.2 inches shorter. But it is within a couple of inches of the new Land Cruiser 300 series because the overall length is 193.7 inches and the wheelbase is exactly the same as the Land Cruiser 300 series at 112.2 inches. Of course, this applies to the Lexus GX as well. And the width is also a little bit narrower than the 300 series. It's 84.2 inches, but this includes a mirror. So obviously you take a few inches off without the mirrors. And the height is 73.2 inches, which is just a little bit lower than the 300 series Land Cruiser as well. The 12th surprise is a naming scheme. Instead of calling a Land Cruiser Prado, which is what it really is, Toyota is simply calling it Land Cruiser. So it's going to be a little bit confusing in market where both the Land Cruiser 300 series and the 250 series will be sold. I don't know how they're going to call it, but in some places there could be a little bit more confusion. Here in North America, we only get one type of Land Cruiser, so it's okay. But it appears that even in Asia and Japan, they are dropping the Prado name because it used to be called a Land Cruiser Prado. So that is a big surprise for me, although I would assume that maybe the Prado name will stay with some of the models in some of the marketplace. The third thing you should know is that thankfully, the towing hitch is standard on all new Land Cruisers but the uh, capacity for towing is 6,000 pounds, which is acceptable and it's not too bad, but I was hoping for a little bit more than that. Just as a comparison, the previous Land Cruiser, which was back in 2021 with a V8 engine, had an 8,100 pound for towing capacity. 
The 14th point is not really a surprise, but something you should know, and that is the old Land Cruiser will come standard with all-wheel drive with center locking differential and electronic rear differential as well. The 15th point is that there's lots of a revision in suspension as well, mirroring what happened to Lexus GX. So the front suspension will be double wishbone suspension, and the rear we have a multi-link suspension with a coil spring, which should improve the overall quality of the ride of the new Land Cruiser. The 16th thing is about the ground clearance and the departure angle, and I'll look at my cheat notes here to get the numbers right. The ground clearance is now 8.7 inches, which is not bad, with approach angle of 31 degrees and maximum departure angle of 22 degrees. A breakover angle is also 25 degrees, so not bad in terms of being able to take this to the real off-road courses, something that many Land Cruisers only look forward to. And I look forward to that as well if I were to end up buying the Land Cruiser, which is something I haven't decided yet. I have a deposit on one but I'm kind of leaning toward the Lexus GX because the GX has more features and most important of all it has a V6 engine which I think is kind of important on the off-road vehicles so I may end up buying the GX over the Land Cruiser but something I have to figure out later on. The 17th point is also an important one for those of us who like off-roading and that is the recovery hooks or tow hooks are standard on all Land Cruisers at least in the front there's none in the rear but that's okay at least we get the real tow hooks just like we have in the new Tacoma. The 18th point is also an important one for those of us who like to do off-roading because you know Toyota won't compromise when it comes to giving us that true off-road capability for Land Cruiser. And that is the fact that multi-terrain select is standard and now it works in both four-wheel drive high and four-wheel drive low and it has mud, dirt and sand mode. So I'm looking forward to trying that as well. The 19th point is also something I expected, which is that the crawl control is standard, which is kind of like a low speed cruise control for off-roading and also the downhill assist is standard. So those things that will help with managing the speed and managing the control when you're doing off-roading. And just like in the new Tacoma, the front stabilizer disconnect is available or standard on some models. So I really appreciate that because if you really want to do hardcore off-roading, you absolutely want that feature. I'm thankful that is standard or at least available on some of the Land Cruiser models. And the 21st point is something that will also enhance our ability to go some true off-roading and that's the fact that rock wells will be standard on some models as well as the steel skid plate. The 22nd point is something that I have to predict because none of us have driven a Land Cruiser and we won't get to drive it for a while. But because of the fact that we're moving to turbocharged four-cylinder engine with the hybrid with a maximum torque at a very low RPM, I actually think the acceleration will improve dramatically compared to the older uh, 200 series or even compared to the 300 series. I think with lots of power and torque available right off the bat, I think you'll see a really good performance in terms of 0 to 60 and overall acceleration times. The 23rd point is something that I have to make a decision on and that is should you buy the Land Cruiser or should you buy the new Lexus GX. They're both identical almost now and they look similar although with lots of differentiation but the biggest difference is that the GX will have a twin turbo V6 engine whereas the Land Cruiser is going with a 2.4 liter turbo hybrid uh, and that's a four cylinder engine of course and the GX will also a hybrid option later on which will be identical to the Land Cruiser with a 2.4 liter turbo hybrid so you kind of have to make a decision based on the part and availability for me because I really like the V6 engine that was in the Tundra since I owned the Tundra for a while I think I might go with the GX but I'm drawn to Land Cruiser's basic appeal so it's something that we'll have to decide later on. The 24th point is about the fuel efficiency and fuel economy. Now we don't have any official numbers from uh, Lexus or Toyota so we don't know that yet but because the um, Land Cruiser will only come in 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine with hybrid, uh, I'm going to assume that overall the Land Cruiser will give you better fuel efficiency unless you wait until later on to buy the Lexus GX also with the same 2.4 liter turbocharged uh, hybrid uh, because then obviously fuel efficiency should be about the same. So it all depends on what you're looking for. If you want maximum fuel economy and you want to get your hands on one of the two SUVs as soon as possible, you may want to buy the Land Cruiser first. But if you're not too concerned about the uh, fuel economy and you really want the V6 engine, then as I mentioned earlier, you want to buy the Lexus GX. And the 25th point is that just like the Tacoma, there will be many, many accessories offered by Toyota to customize your Land Cruiser. In fact, I'm hearing that more than 100 accessories will be offered in the beginning with much more to come. So I can't wait to see how people will dress up the new Land Cruiser. The 26th point is that there are some new colors for a new Land Cruiser and I'm really excited about some of those new colors including what they call the underground, the heritage blue and also paint called the trail dust. So those are new colors in addition to standard colors that are being offered already. 
and as expected you will get full electronics and much improved infotainment system and we will have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto and those are all the things we expect anyway but we're excited as a 27 point. The 28th point is that even though the Land Cruiser is geared for off-roaders and those people who enjoy outdoor we have some luxury features including available leather seat as I mentioned earlier but also we even get head-up display. So I'm excited that we can get a combination of luxury and off-roading capability all in one package. As expected, all of the safety features have also been upgraded for Land Cruiser, which is my 29th point. And in fact, a new Land Cruiser will have the new Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. The 30th and the final point is that the new Land Cruiser will adopt electric power steering as expected to save fuel and to improve fuel efficiency away from the hydraulic power steering. So unfortunately that means that uh, some of the feedback we get with a good old fashioned hydraulic power steering will be gone but I expect the new steering to be more agile and to offer better handling and better performance overall. So even though we might not have the hydraulic, I'm happy that we have a more efficient electric power steering with improved feel. So I just shared 30 surprises or 30 important points about the new Toyota Land Cruiser. There are a lot more that I want to share with you in coming days, but this is a good summary for now. And I'm really curious how excited you are about the revival of a Land Cruiser. Well, here in Canada, we are super, super happy because we haven't had one for over 27 years. But even for US, we didn't think the Land Cruiser will come back. So this is amazing news. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the all new Land Cruiser and let me know what kind of questions you might have. As usual, I'm going to ask you if you can give me a thumbs up and make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe? Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.